Book of Revelation Decoded Prelude The writer of this book was a disciple of Yeshua ben Joseph. He had a vision and he was told to write it down. The vision was brought to him by Yeshua ben Joseph. And at the end, he says, I am like a fellow servant like you, a brother. During Revelation, Yeshua ben Joseph is referred to as Jesus, which is wrong. Jesus is the name of our mother and father God. Yeshua spoke about the power of the name of the Father. But our written version of the Bible doesn't include a few things, because probably the Romans, or just the understanding at the time, that we have a mother and father God that is a complete soul, that has a name, and that name has power, and it is Jesus. At the beginning of Revelation, Jesus Christ is mentioned three times. He is the faithful witness. He is the angel that is showing John the vision and speaking to him. He is the one with the hair white like wool, gleaming eyes and feet like burnished brass. In the middle of Revelation, Revelation 10, the voice of the seven thunders speaks, but John is told not to write it down. He learns something in this. And at the end, John does not refer to Jesus Christ again, but Lord Jesus. He's just been told by Yeshua ben Joseph not to worship him, to worship God only. But he still feels he needs to call him something. But he doesn't mention the Christ again with the name Jesus. Those seven thunders said something. Now, through the course of this revelation decoded, step by step, the whole book of Revelation will be worked through and understood and will be consistent. The meaning of what is said can sometimes be multiple but there is a broad timeline of God's plan in this time, the end times. First Trumpet, year 1349, on the throne of England, King Edward III, the first trumpet, then the seven angels that held the seven trumpets prepared to blow them, the first blew his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mingled with blood, and this was hurled upon the earth. A third of the earth was burnt, a third of the trees were burnt, all the green grass was burnt. The big event in 1349 was the Great Plague, killed over a third of the people in Europe, some 200 million. 
and people who got plague would often get black limbs as though they were burnt. The first seal. Then I watched as the lamb broke the first of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come, and there before my eyes was a white horse, and its rider held a bow. He was given a crown, and he rode forth conquering and to conquer. This does resemble King Edward III, and that it mentions a bow. King Edward III was helped very much in his conquest by using the long bow. The first bowl. So the first angel went and poured his bowl on the earth, and foul malignant sores appeared on those men that wore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. So again, referring to the plague. The first church. So this is a message to the people of this time. These are the words of the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven lamps of gold. I know all your ways, your toil and your fortitude. I know you cannot endure evil men. You have put to the proof those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Fortitude you have, you have borne up in my cause and never flagged, but I have this against you. You have lost your early love. Think from what a height you have fallen. Repent and do as you once did. Otherwise, if you do not repent, I shall come to you and remove your lamp from its place. Yet you have this in your favour. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, as I do. Hear, you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life that stands in the garden of God. Now, I did have a look into the Nicolaitans, and it seems they are... Seems they are still about because they can ring me in the middle of this. They are the ones who changed the dates, as we will hear a bit later on, I believe. Um, so why have we got? Why do we celebrate Christmas? Why is it and Easter? You know, they're not traditional feast days. They are probably they well they are pagan feast days. So it is the the Catholic Church. Um, So yeah, so that is the first section and it all fits into the year 1349. Some 250 years since the first trumpet. It is 1596 and we have the second trumpet. The second angel blew his trumpet and what looked like a great blazing mountain was hurled into the sea. A third of the sea was turned to blood. A third of the living creatures in it died and a third of the ships on it foundered. Now we have many battles, sea battles in this period, before this period, after this period. But surely this period here is the age of the sea. Francis Drake has by now circumnavigated the globe for the first time. And interestingly, the 
the Armada did lose a third of its ships on the there's the 1588 version but there's also the 1596 version and then 1597 the English Armada went to attack Spain and did about as well as the Spanish did against England so it didn't work out too good and we have the second seal when the lamb broke the second seal I heard a second creature say come and out came another horse all red to its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and make men slaughter one another and he was given a great sword the monarch on the throne of England at this time was Queen Elizabeth the first we also have another interesting person in this time and that is William Shakespeare in fact 1596 is probably the very midst of his success in doing plays in London and obviously after long after he's died his plays are still renowned now I was thinking about the great sword could that be the cannon because the cannon also invented long before this but at this time was becoming a real part of the army a real useful part it had before been a bit more of a defensive only tool but and it'd been on ships before they'd started wheeling them around and using them um, in warfare so the great sword could be the cannon but it also could be people like Shakespeare writing plays the effect the word has don't they say the word is mightier than the sword another way to say that would be a great sword and the fact that how it says it would make men slaughter one another perhaps words in these plays would stir people's passions the second bowl the second angel poured his bowl on the sea and turned it to blood like the blood from a corpse and everything every living thing in the sea died now we're pretty sure that at no point every living thing in the sea died but all these three point towards the sea um, it's quite common with the seal trumpet and bowl that two of them refer to one thing but here pardon me pardon me yes only two of them here refer to the sea moving on <laughs> to the church at Smyrna right these are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life again I know how hard pressed you are and poor and yet you are rich I know how you are slandered by those who claim to be Jews but are not they are Satan's synagogue do not be afraid of the suffering to come the devil will throw some of you into prison to put you to the test and for ten days you will suffer cruelly only be faithful till death and I will give you the crown of life hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches he who is victorious cannot be harmed by the second death so we have here the first mention of the those Jews who claim to be Jews but are not they are Satan's synagogue these are the false Jews Jews were black that's why they were hated so obviously hated but there are some who are claiming to be Jews but who are not they were not black we also have here the ten days you will suffer cruelly this here is a clue about the ten years of tribulation that was how it was in 1596 revelations decoded parts one two and three now here we're talking about the bits that don't fall into either the seven churches seven trumpets seven seals or seven vials and this is the first section and this is basically an introduction 
the reason I'm doing parts one, two, and three together is that there isn't an awful lot to say. Uh, possibly because I just can't get my mind that far back in the past. Um, and also for what it says. But uh, I've just highlighted a couple of things here in the first section. Analogy of John to the people of the world at the seven points in the future, instead of what it says there. And just to say that he who was and is and is to come is definitely talking about God. Okay. So, second section. This is... Another one that I can't really get my mind into that much, but I can definitely wonder, and I think this is certainly up to the year 1596, would have been an age of wonder discovering the world. Now in the third section here, this all seems to be about preparation. Uh, getting all the ones sealed and preparing for what's to be done next. Okay, there we go. It's been a little over 200 years and we come to the year 1805 and we have the third trumpet. The third angel blew his trumpet and a great star shot from the sky flaming like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and springs. The name of the star was Wormwood and a third of the water turned to Wormwood and men in great numbers died of the water because it had been poisoned. Now the wormwood bit would very much fit with cholera. Um, it's very much around that time and it's a perfect description of how it can spread into other water and it certainly killed a lot of people and basically the water was poisoned by cholera around this time. Okay, then the third seal. When he broke the third seal I heard the th third creature say, Come, and there as I looked was a black horse and its rider held in his hand a pair of scales, and I heard what sounded like a voice from the midst of the living creatures which said, A whole day's wage for a quart of flour, a whole day's wage for three quarts of barley meal, but spare the olive and the vine. Now this seems to be talking about economy, money. Now King George III, he was very much taking care of the economy and protected England through all these Napoleonic wars and yes, we lost America but didn't completely fall out, gained Australia and I was interested to see what colour hair George III had because 
so far, you know, we've had the first king of England, Edward III, having white hair, okay, when he was older, on a white, you know, and the white horse and bow. Then the second one, we've got Queen Elizabeth on the throne, red head, <laughs> red horse. Uh, but, you know, I guess he, so King George III had red hair as well, I think, or blonde. He was always wearing a wig. But Napoleon certainly got black hair, and here we have a black horse. But, sort of, I don't know, there's something about the English monarchs that's holding this. Anyway, but it's very much about this Napoleonic time. Big, big thing at this time, 1805. <clears throat> now the third bowl. The third angel poured his bowl on rivers and springs, and they turned to blood. Then I heard the angel of the waters say, Just art thou in these thy judgments, thou holy one who art and wast, for they shed the blood of thy people and of thy prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. They have their deserts. And I heard the altar cry, Yes, Lord God, sovereign over all, true and just are thy judgments. So very much the springs, rivers and springs in this one, and certainly the cholera, the cholera thing would maybe affect that. But um, you know all that gunpowder and burning and just all over the land, and it, yeah, just kind of seems to fit with all those Napoleonic wars, because they were a lot of land wars in that time. So now to the church, to the angel of the church at Pergamum write. These are the words of the one who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you live. It is the place where Satan has his throne. And yet you are holding fast to my cause. You did not deny your faith in me even at the time when Antipas, my faithful witness, was killed in your city, the home of Satan. But I have a few matters to bring against you. You have in Pergamum some that hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put temptation in the way of the Israelites. He encouraged them to eat food sacrificed to idols, to commit fornication, and in the same way you also have some who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. So repent, if you do not, I shall come to you soon and make war upon them with the sword that comes out of my mouth. Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who is victorious I will give some of the hidden manna. I will give him also a white stone, and on the name of the stone will be written a new name, known to none but him that receives it. So we've got Antipas, my faithful witness. Now, his faithful witness is Yeshua. Is Yeshua have a life in this time i haven't found that out yet but in this time in 1805 there's some who are holding to the teachings of baal that sounds like balaam probably the same thing and also some holding to the nicolaitans and then we have also this white stone this white stone that people will that will be given in this time and we have the the uh, Rosetta Stone, which is called, it's got the three different languages on it, so it enabled them to understand the Egyptian hieroglyphics, hidden manner. Um, and it is white writing on the stone, so maybe it was called the White Stone. Okay. 1805, that's how it was. Revelation is decoded. Four. So we get to the section 
number four, so between 1805 and 1938. And we have a whole lot of stuff in here. It just seems like everything's shoved in here. Now, I've had a recent revelation about this, and I've come to the conclusion that the two witnesses and the dragon and woman bit is actually talking about this whole period between 1349 and 2128. So then I was thinking, well, maybe this period relates in some way to the 1260 days or the 42 months or three and a half years because I have said earlier that perhaps the time times and half a time is just referring to a period of time that nobody knows the length of but it's mentioned in the two witnesses quite a lot and it's also mentioned with the dragon pursuing the woman so what I did is I thought right okay so what is the period 1349 to 2128 how long is that it's 779 years now the moon cycle is 19 years and I'll show you a little bit about that um, it's called the, the Metron I that right. I'm not in front of the picture of the moon. <laughs> dear, oh dear, this is terrible, terrible. So I've got a picture here that I will make available. Oh, it's, well, it's gone. It's just gone. Where's it freaking gone? Oh dear. is badly gone there it is silly me I put it in a new folder so metonic metonic cycle so uh, the moon needs to go around the earth 235 times for it to be measured in exact years so it, every 19 years you can say the moon has gone round a whole number so that is the relationship between the 19 years and so 779 divided by 19 is 41 now I didn't know it was going to be that close to me that is too close for coincidence and we could quite happily say that you know that 1349 and 2128 were the midpoints of a trough so we could if we were starting on level pegging that would be about you know nine and a half years before so 1340 and then nine and a half years afterwards or we could add 19 years to the end bit or begin at 19 years before and we'd get 42 so because it's so close and I've been really confused about the two witnesses and everything and that time period and so this has actually sort of awoken something and saying you know yes this is right you know all this stuff happening in the fourth two witnesses and the dragon and the woman is is just sort of there's so much in it so basically what I'm saying is that throughout this whole period 1349 to 2128 there's going to be times when the two witnesses are here all the way through and the the, the story about the the dragon and the woman I mean I'm what I'm saying is that not necessarily that's just in this time of the um, the fourth period but that it sort of stretches out so because it is a bit different when he sees the two witnesses before he's he's um, 
he's he's eaten a piece of paper that's bitter in his so it's like a he's having another sort of vision within a vision and then at the end of the fourth we've got we've got this bit here where it says he will make his stand on the seashore and that just makes me think so much about Winston Churchill's speech we will fight them on the beaches and um, now so you could say that Churchill was the dragon but or you could say that the Nazis were the dragon and that's where Churchill had to attack them on the beaches they made their stands on the beaches yeah. so yeah that is the fourth section section hundred and thirty odd years later and it's 1938 and it is time for the fourth trumpet the fourth angel blew his trumpet and a third part of the Sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that the third part went dark and a third of the light of the day failed and of the night then I looked and I heard an eagle calling with a loud cry as it flew in the mid heaven. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth when the trumpets sound which the three last angels must now blow. So it is quite a short one because half of it talks about the next three. But maybe that eagle, I don't know. But basically... A third part of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so that a third part went dark, of everything. So it must be the atmosphere. It must be the atmosphere which has lost a third of its clarity. And if we look at pollution, yes, pollution was quite a thing in, in the 30s even, because of the industrialization. That's what's causing it. The fourth seal. When he broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth creature say, Come! And there, as I looked, was another horse, sickly pale, and its rider's name was Death and Hades came close behind. To him was given power over a quarter of the earth, with the right to kill by sword and by famine, by pestilence and wild beasts. So his rider's name was Death and Hades came close behind. Hades is hell, I think. Now, 1938, Hitler, Nazis, Second World War, it's pretty clear what happened to the Jews and all that. The monarch of the English throne at the time was George VI. And he was a sick man uh, and died in 1952, but he'd, he was... You know, which was quite early. He wasn't um, he wasn't very old when he died. Um, so it kind of fits with the with the four horsemen, and that was one thing I wanted to mention about the four horsemen. I I heard it said that the the four horses are quite often about say a single king's reign, and the the first horse, the white horse, is how he is at the beginning of his reign. And then in the second stage is like the red horse, the war thing. And, and then the third stage is the black horse. And the fourth stage is the, is the pale horse. So it sort of seems like it is following this story with the English monarchs. Some, it's just like it's the English, the English rule in a sense, and um, because by the time we get to the fifth, it's not really the English ruling anymore. So I don't know. The bowl, the fourth bowl, the fourth angel poured his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to burn men with its flames. 
They were fearfully burned, but they only cursed the name of God, who had the power to inflict such plagues, and they refused to repent or do him homage. So, nuclear, nuclear weapons were being discovered right in this 1938 time. In fact, the patent was was initiated at this time exactly so <clears throat> it's um nail on the head for this one and of course they actually got to use them in the war so within the 10 year tribulation period the nuclear bombs were used twice and i don't know the japanese are not god believing people but we've got this, this is bang on, basically. It's got to be about the nuclear stuff. To the angel of the church at Theatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes flame like fire and whose feet gleam like burnished brass. I know all your ways, your love, your faithfulness, your good service and your fortitude, and of late you have done even better than at first. Yet I have this against you. You tolerate that Jezebel, the woman who claims to be a prophetess, who by her teaching lures my servants into fornication and to, into eating food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her fornication. So I will throw her onto a bed of pain, and plunge her lovers into terrible suffering, unless they forswear what she is doing, and her children I will strike dead. This will teach all of the churches that I am the searcher of men's hearts and thoughts, and that I will reward each one of you according to his deeds. And now I speak to you others in Theatira, who do not accept this teaching, and have had no experience of what they like to call the deep secrets of Satan. On you I will impose no further burden, only hold fast to what you have until I come. To him who is victorious, to him who perseveres in doing my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations, that same authority which I received from my father, and he shall rule them with an iron rod, smashing them into bits like earthenware, and I will give him also the star of dawn, Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that was the world in 1938. Revelations Decoded, number five. So we're talking about from 1938 up to the present day and a little bit beyond. The first thing we see is a beast out of the sea. Ten horns and seven heads. So these are the... This is a little bit of backstory here. Um, so we're talking about the seven-headed beast. A beast is an empire. It's got seven heads, so there are seven nations. And if we look at the colonial empire of Europe, seven nations going all around the world. And doesn't it fit the description that was granted to them authority over every tribe and people, language and nation? The mortal uh, wound on one of the heads, I feel, could be Russia, it could be Portugal, it could be Italy, Germany. But I think it's most likely Great Britain. And at the point when it, one of its colonies, the USA, um, basically defeated it. But then was happy to worship it and this brings us to the second beast then I saw another beast which came up out of the earth it had two horns like a lamb but spoke like a dragon spoke like a devil lying deceiving 
Isn't that true with all the deals they did with the Native Americans? Every single one of them was a lie. So uh, this second beast is America, is performing all these miracles, which certainly America has been doing. Then we get on to the mark of the beast with the representing number 666. Uh, this is the barcode. No one can buy or sell without the barcode. If you want to have products and sell them in the shop, you've got to get this barcode system. You probably can't get into that system without going along with it. And then the last section we've got, um, the lamb is on my, Mount Zion with the 144,000. They're singing a new song and it's a state of mind. So yes, the Zion train is coming our way. And that is section number five. Less than a hundred years after 1938, it'll be 2033 and the fifth trumpet. Now, as this is in the future, I cannot show you evidence for what's happened because it hasn't happened yet. But it's it changes now. We've had the first four trumpet seals and vials. We're even warned after the fourth trumpet. Woe, woe, woe for the three trumpets that must be blown now. And I feel this is the beginning of the cleaning up. So for those who are good and on the right side, these things aren't going to be bad. They're going to be improvements. For example, the fifth trumpet says with this he opened the shaft of the abyss now the abyss is where things can be thrown that we can get rid of forevermore and the on only things that we'll get rid of forevermore will be evil things bad things they talk about this um came locusts out of the abyss and they were given the powers that earthly scorpions have and it's going to sounds really bad right and it goes on for quite a long the fifth trumpet is the longest one but like i said anyone can kind of wonder what might happen um but we won't really know until it does happen with the fifth seal, the altar of the souls of those who had been slaughtered for God's word and the testimony bore, they gave a great, great cry, how long now, how long? But they're told to wait a little longer. And they were told to rest a little while longer until the tally should be complete of all their brothers in Christ's service who were to be killed as they had been. Each of them was given a white robe. And the fifth bowl is, bought, is poured on the throne of the beast. So that's good, right? And I think it's going to be money. I think in 2033, like money, because that's where all the power is for the rich and the beast, right? That's where their power is, the seat of the beast, their power. And it'll be gone. It's the beast's kin kingdom plunged into darkness. Still, they didn't repent. We'll read the Church of Sardis because this is the average people at the time, right? So in 2033, these are the words of the one who holds the seven spirits of God, the seven stars. I know all your ways that though you have a name for being alive, you are dead. Wake up and put some strength into what is left, which must otherwise die. For I have not found any work of yours completed in the eyes of my God. 
so remember the teaching you received, observe it and repent. If you do not wake up, I shall come upon you like a thief, and you will not know the moment of my coming. Yet you have a few persons in Sardis who have not yet polluted their clothing. They shall walk with me in white, for so they deserve. He who is victorious shall thus be robed all in white. His name I will never strike off the roll of the living, for in the presence of my Father and his angels I will acknowledge him as mine. Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So there are few, a few who will walk with him in white. I think we need to bear that in mind. That will be the world in 2033. It's less than 60 years now from 2033 and we get to 2090. This is the sixth trumpet. The sixth angel then blew his trumpet and I heard a voice coming from between the horns of the golden altar that stood in the presence of God. It said to the sixth angel who held the trumpet, release the four angels held bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels were let loose to kill a third of mankind. They had already been held ready for this moment, for this very year and month and day and hour, and their squadrons of cavalry, whose count I'd heard numbered 200 million. Now, there's a lot more to this, but hey, look, this is quite long in the future. The world is going to change quite a lot. So I'll go to the sixth seal. Then I watched you break the sixth seal, and there was a violent earthquake. The sun turned black as funeral pale, and the moon all red as blood. The stars in the sky fell to the earth like figs shaken down by a gale. The sky vanished as a scroll is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the magnates and marshals, the rich and the powerful, and all men, slave or free, hid themselves in caves and mountain crags, and they called out to the mountains and crags, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the vengeance of the Lamb. For the great day of their vengeance has come, and who will be able to stand? And the sixth angel poured his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the, from the east. Then I saw coming from the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet, three foul spirits like frogs. These spirits were devils with power to work miracles. They were sent out to muster all the kings of the world for the great day of battle of God, the sovereign Lord, that is the day when I come like a thief. Happy the man who stays awake and keeps on his clothes, so that he will not have to go naked and ashamed for all to see. So they assembled the kings at the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. So that sounds like a massive war. To the church at Philadelphia, so this is the average people in the year 2090. To the angel of the church at Philadelphia write, These are the words of the Holy One the true one, who holds the key of David. When he opens, none may shut. When he shuts, none may open. I know all your ways, and look, I have set before you an open door, which no one can shut. Your strength, I know, is small, yet you have observed my commands and have not disowned my name. So this is what I will do. I will make those of Satan's synagogue, who claim to be Jews but are lying frauds, Come and fall down at your feet, and they shall know that you are my beloved people, because you have kept my command and stood fast. I will also keep you from the ordeal that is to fall upon the whole world and test its inhabitants. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have, and let no one rob you of your crown. He who is victorious, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall never leave it, and I will write the name of my God upon him and the name of the city of my God, that new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God, and my new and my own new name. Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That will be the world in 2090. Just 38 years after 2090, 
get to 2128, and the seventh and last trumpet. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and voices were heard in heaven shouting, The sovereignty of the world has passed to our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God, sovereign over all, who art and who wast, because thou hast taken thy great power into thy hands and ent entered upon thy reign. The nations raged, but thy day of retribution has come. Now is the time for the dead to be judged. Now is the time for recompense to thy servants, the prophets, to thy dedicated people, and all who honour thy name, both great and small, the time to destroy those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was laid open, and within the temple was seen the ark of his covenant. There came flashes of lightning and peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a storm of hail. Now the seventh seal. Now when the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for what seemed half an hour. Then I looked, and the seven angels that stand in the presence of God were given seven trumpets. Then another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer, and he was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people upon the golden altar in front of the throne. And from the angel's hand the smoke of the incense went up before God with the prayers of his people. Then the angel took the censer, filled it from the altar fire, and threw it down upon the earth, and there were peals of thunder, lightning, and earthquake. And the seventh bowl, then the seventh angel poured his bowl on the air, and out of the sanctuary came a loud voice from the throne which said, It is over, and there followed flashes of lightning and peals of thunder, and a violent earthquake like none before it in human history. So violent it was, the great city was split in three, the cities of the world fell in ruin, and God did not forget Babylon the great but made her drink the cup which was filled with the fierce wine of his vengeance. Every island vanished, there was not a mountain to be seen. Huge hailstones, weighing perhaps a hundredweight, fell on men from the sky, and they cursed God for the plague of hail, because that plague was so severe. The Seventh Church To the angel of the church at Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen the faithful and true witness, the prime source of all God's creation. I know all your ways. You are neither hot nor cold. How I wish you were either hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say how rich I am and how well I have done. I have everything I want. In fact, though you do not know it, you are the most pitiful wretch, poor, blind and naked. So I advise you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, to make you truly rich, and white clothes to put on to hide your shame of your nakedness, an ointment for your eyes so that you may see. All whom I love I reprove and discipline. Be on your mettle, therefore, and repent. Here I stand, knocking at the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sit down to supper with him, and he with me. To him who is victorious, I will grant a place on my throne, as I myself was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that will be the world in 2128. After 2033... The Bible is talking about the harvest the angels reap and the pressing of the wine press and stuff like that. And we get to 2128, just before the seventh trumpet. So between the between 2090 and 2128 is when Babylon falls, and that's all writing about Babylon falling. And it's very much. Uh, 
definitely a, a marine city, a trading city. I mean, I would say New York, but I would also, it's probably not just one city, but again, it's the future. So I'm not going to go too much into it. And then after 2128, we have the rider on a white horse and we have New Jerusalem. So the, the devil is bound up. It's all good. It's all good. You can read it. So to sort of summarize this this piece of work, it's been long and arduous and it's it's been um, very, very interesting and revealing. Just revealed something to myself today with Britannia possibly being the woman who's being chased by the dragon all throughout this period uh, of 779 years which divided by 19, as that's the metonic cycle, equals 41. Should be 42, I guess. So we've got to add something onto the beginning and end, or either, either. It very much fits in. And I'm, I'm sure, like, I'm going to get more things, more information. But I really wanted to finish something and it's interesting because one of the churches says about you know we're not we don't finish things um i really <laughs> wanted to finish this <laughs> but it's never going to be finished because i mean a large chunk of it is in the future um but i guess as time goes on we'll be able to find that this fits for what's going on more and more. I mean, I am, perhaps I'm overconfident that this is all correct and right. I'm, I'm supremely confident. And I guess I wasn't when I was halfway through this project and I thought, I've just got to get on with it, just got to battle through it. I haven't got answers for every line at all I mean that was my intention then I soon got put off that I couldn't think about doing every single line and some of it is so general so you can just you know oh this whole three pages you can just kind of sum that up in one thing and then some bits are just, you know, a paragraph, and there just seems to be so much information in that one paragraph. It's, um, it's amazing, really. Amazing thing. And it's, yeah, well. So, I made a prelude, prelude, I don't even know how to say it, a prelude video, in which... I talked about John having learned something in the midst of this when the seven thunders spoke, but he was told not to write down what they said. Now, I'm going to come out and say what I th think. I mean, you may have already guessed from the prelude video a bit at the beginning that he was calling, he was saying the words Jesus Christ. Now, I've always already said about the word, the name Jesus. The name, the name Jesus, is our mother and father God. That is the father's name that Yeshua said has power. Okay, so when you see Jesus written in the Bible, it probably should be saying Yeshua. Maybe there are certain times, but most of the time it should be saying Yeshua. So when he's saying Yeshua Christ at the beginning. At the end, he says, Yeshua, Lord. Now, the seven thunders spoke and they said, the Christ changes. God and his Christ. God will always have a Christ, a chosen one for that time. And all of us children of God will have that one time when we are God's Christ and 
we all got to feel that weight and responsibility on our shoulders one time. But it's also an amazing time because you actually kind of, you know, get to work with God, um, which is amazing. So that's what I'm saying these seven thunders um, spoke about. So, whereas Yeshua was God's Christ when John was doing this stuff, that was going to change. And um, perhaps it's even changed twice. But, um, yeah. Some things just have to be known on a feeling basis and not a word basis. And... That would be my advice to anyone is just go into your heart, into your core, bring all three parts of you together in one place, your physical, your spiritual and your emotional, but the emotional is top, that's, that's, that's where God works mainly, you know. God's physical is this table, this room, all the atoms in this universe. That's God's physical. We also have our own universes. But we are still infantile, naked, blind. We've got so much to learn from our mother and father. And... Um, we are on that path. We are on that path to awakening as a as a brotherhood and sisterhood. It's the real deal. Okay. That's it now. I can go. I've finished this little project and I can just chill for a bit. I might add bits, but I'm not going to be doing another one of these, I don't think. So, yeah. Thanks for listening, and uh, ciao.